action that will preserve order. Okay. Okay, so there's lots of well-ordered sets, and von Neumann asked, well, can you give me a way to classify all possible well-ordered sets? Okay. How many uh, points do we have in this set? Finitely many. How many here? Countably many. How many here? Also countably many. There's countably many here, another countably many here, and three more points here. Right? Okay, so... There are, in fact, many different well-ordered sets that have the same cardinality, right? OK, so what was uh, von Neumann's idea? Well, von, von Neumann said, well, look, here's, here's one way we could start off. Let's, um, let's start off by uh, describing a set that we'll think of as the set, the, uh, uh, a well-ordered set. It's a set that's, that's naturally vacuously well-ordered, the empty set, OK? OK. Uh, and then, OK, what's another set that I might want to consider? Well, how about the set containing one element, right? Or the set containing two elements. Now, you could just create your own sets that have, you know, set containing something and set containing something else. But it sure would be nice if, I could maybe write all the other ones in terms of ones I've defined before. This was von Neumann's idea. So what we're going to do for uh, the next ordinal is to basically look at the set containing the empty set. How many elements does this have? One element. And the element is the empty set. OK. Oh, very cool. Now, what's the, what, what am I going to do next? Well, uh, I now want a set with how many elements? Two elements. So what elements would you suggest? No, no. Well, you, yeah, you could. Yeah, let's take the, the, the union of all the objects that we've defined previously. So that's the set with two elements, and it's basically the, the, the previous two things. Yes? With me? OK. What about um, this, a set with three elements? We're going to do this one, this one, and one more. But that one more thing is this one and this one. <laughs> right? Happy? How many elements does this have? It looks like four, but it's really three. This, this, and this. Yes. Ooh, excellent. Haven't gotten there yet. Haven't gotten there yet. Um, but uh, I've, I've actually written the ordering in the way that's suggestive of the order. Can you, can you guess what the ordering might be? Oh, no, no, don't say number, because we haven't defined number. Yes, less if it's, con if it's contain contained. So containment is going to be the ordering. OK. Ah, very cool. So um, you could, if you want, think of this ordinal number as something that's zero-like, right? And this is sort of the ordinal number with one thing in it. This is two things. This is three things. But I'm not counting sizes, because that would be a cardinal number. Ordinal numbers are sets that are uh, well, you know, they're, 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 they, they reflect also the, the order type, right? A well ordered type. Okay, good. So, yes, keep going. So, uh, some things to notice here with this construction is that uh, every member. of this of 3 is a subset. Okay? So every member of a of one of these ordinal numbers is a subset of one of the ordin, or ordinal numbers. Uh, would you agree uh, let's see 1 is a subset of 2? Yes. Yes. Is 1 a subset of 3? Yes, very good. Is 0 a subset of 3? Yes, OK. Is 3 a subset of 2? No. OK. So that's, in fact, 
uh, the uh, we're gonna order the sets by membership. Or containment, as Willie referred to. Okay. So, here's our definition of an ordinal. An ordinal is, this is quite cool, a set that is two properties. First property is we're going to demand that it be uh, transitive. Sometimes this is called a uh, or complete. Every member uh, is a subset. Okay. Is that true? Is every member here a subset? This is actually almost tautologous, but it's not quite. Is it true that this is a member? Yes, that's a member. The set contained the empty set. Now, is it a subset? Yes, because the thing that's in it is here, right? Yes, OK. Uh, is this thing a member, the set containing these two things? Yes. Why? Uh, oh, well, it is a member because it's in here. Is it a subset? Yes, because both these things are here, OK? OK, so every member is a subset. That's, that's what we see here, OK? Every member of 3 is a subset of 3. OK, uh, and so an ordinal has a property that every member is a subset. And the second property is it's strictly well-ordered uh, by membership. OK, so um, I can uh, well order each of these sets by the things that are members. OK, so from this definition, it's a very innocuous definition, there's a lot that comes from it. You might wonder, well, what do the ordinals look like? What other, what other things are ordinals besides the ones that are the obvious ones here? All right, well, check this out. Um, the first property you might notice is that if alpha is an ordinal, then I can define a new ordinal very simply by, and I'll call this the, su the successor of alpha, S of alpha. I'll take the set alpha and union it with the set containing the set alpha. Okay. The claim is that if alpha is an ordinal, this new construction is an ordinal. And it has a name. It's called the successor ordinal. OK, let's see if we, let's see if we, if we buy that here. Let's see. If I take 2 and I union 2 with the set containing this set, don't I, in fact, get this? There's the original set 2, and I union it with the set containing this. You see that here? Each, each, each successive um, thing you get is basically throw in this, take this set, and union it with the set containing this set. OK? Happy? OK. That's one consequence we see. The successor of the alpha alpha is an ordinal. OK. Here's a second thing we notice. If alpha is an ordinal and beta is in alpha, remember alpha is a set, what can I conclude about beta? If it's an element of alpha? Yeah, well, the claim is if, if, if alpha is an ordinal and beta is in it, then beta is also an ordinal. Does, it, is it, does, does beta have this property that every member is a subset? Yes. Look at uh, this creature. It's in alpha. But uh, uh, is every member a subset? Well, yeah, of course every member is a subset. Uh, 